Welcome to Church of the Chair, where we're all going to leave behind an epic TBR when we die. I'm your host, E, and today we're doing a discussion video. Now, this video, other than the intro, is going to be like the other discussion videos I've been doing, a throwback to how I used to do the videos with little to no edits whatsoever. Today, I want to talk about a handful of books, there's five of them, um, that I enjoyed really really loved that no one ever talks about and the reason I'm doing that is because as I said in my review yesterday uh, Stephen Markley's The Deluge while I absolutely love this book and it is now in my top probably my top 10 uh, I keep wanting to say top 20 but I believe it's gonna boot out a specific book uh, if you want to know what that is let me know down there in the comments uh, but yeah this one uh, I don't think too many of my viewers, friends, fans uh, are going to be interested in this one, but I want to take a moment and talk about books that I have loved that are either polarizing or that no one has ever heard of. But before we get started, I need your help picking out the next book I'm going to be reading for Time for a Tome. And I have three options. Don't vote down there in the comment section. Go into the description of the video and click on the link to go vote in the poll for what you want me to read next. The next long book I'm going to be reading. And your choices are A Suitable Boy by Vikram Seth which is 1,400 pages. Absolutely nuts. Next one is a horror novel uh, by Mariana Enriquez called Our Share of Night. I've read a considerable amount of this already, but I keep putting it down, and I have been ever since I got the ARC from the publisher, and that was over a year ago, so I'm going to have to restart it. Uh, but if you guys want to see this one, vote for that one. And the last one is one that I just picked off the shelf because it was over 600 pages, um, and it looked interesting to me, and that is Cloud Cuckoo Land by Anthony Dewar. I believe that's how you pronounce his name. So yeah, go click on that link. Um, you can do it now and come back to the video, or you can do it after the video is done. But please go vote in what you would like to see me review next. The first book on books that I love that you probably haven't heard of is Grasshopper Jungle by Andrew Smith. This is a book about a uh, grasshopper apocalypse where uh people are turned into giant gra no, no no sorry they're not turned into uh the giant grasshoppers uh invade the world it's not an alien thing uh it, in fact i don't remember the catalyst but i do remember there being uh some kind of uh, grasshoppers or locusts i can't remember which one it is i think it's a misnomer i don't think they're called uh grasshoppers maybe they're praying mantis anyways but in this one uh, it is a love story also that involves two young men and a girl, and the young man is trying to decide whether or not he's more interested in his friend or his current girlfriend, and this is the only YA novel I've ever enjoyed with a love triangle in it. Uh, it also has my esteemed award, <laughs> that's a joke, uh, for the best YA novel I've ever read. Now, mind you, I don't read a whole lot of YA, but this one has stuck with me. Uh, it is hilarious. It is brutal and gory. Um, so if you're a horror fan, definitely check it out. But it's one of the ones that always gets overlooked. Um, most people, when they think of Andrew Smith, if you've read Andrew Smith, is a uh, winger or uh, stand, stand by, stand something, stand in. I can't remember what the sequel's called. And while I love those books, this one is very special to me. Next up is a book for you lit heads out there who who do not mind experimental novels. My friend Josh sent me this one, and it is Whores for Gloria. I picked this one second, so hopefully this uh this <laughs> this discussion video doesn't get demonetized. But yeah, it's a uh, it's it's wild. Um, and this is one of the inspirations I had to write uh, a. A certain book of mine um, so it has stayed with me ever since I finished it it is a very slim novel I believe it's under 200 pages yeah it's 138 pages and it is about prostitutes and the various Johns that they have and then one specific John uh, that ends up with all of them or, you know, talking to them. It has some very wild scenes. Uh, Chad Lutsky, if you're watching this, 
I think you would get a kick out of this book. It has very dark moments. It has funny moments. Uh, there is no dialogue. There, there is dialogue, but it's more like a Cormac McCarthy where he doesn't use quotation marks. He uses an M dash. Uh, sometimes he doesn't even use that. Like I said, it's very experimental, and you're not going to find any of the norms that you would find in, you know, a regular commercial fiction. Uh, but yeah, I enjoyed every single page of it. It's a wild ride. Um, if you're into if, if you're into experimental stuff, there's no nothing surreal or, uh, let's see here, there's no plot whatsoever. It's just a slice of life. It's very short, and I highly, highly recommend it. Josh, if you watch this, thank you so much for sending it to me. I'll be jumping into all the other Voltman uh, books that you sent. Uh, Volman. I keep wanting to say Voltman, but it's Volman. William T. Volman. Next up, we have a book that I have I have fanboyed all over this channel in the past about, and still not enough people have read it to, for my liking. Uh, I believe my friend Wayne Fenlin said, get, said thank you for uh, bringing up the book because he loved it too. It might have been someone else, so I apologize, Wayne, if it wasn't you. But Palisades Park by Alan Bernert. Brennert? Brennert. Yeah, because it's B-R. Anyways, uh, this one is about the real-life Palisades Park. Uh, it's a boardwalk amusement park out by the ocean, um, and it is also a family saga. Uh, it is a fictional retelling of that f of, th of the family, but it is... Oh, man, it is so good. It automatically made me an Alan Brent Brennert fan. Uh, some words, man, they just end up getting on, they just don't want to come out. Anyways, uh, this one, it holds a very special place in my heart. I'm a huge fan of anything that has amusement parks, theme parks, carnivals, circuses, anything like that. And I think I've read all the ones uh, out there, except for one that I just got from the thrift store. I think it's the Circus of the Land and the Air, something like that. Uh, but if you have any recommendations for circus, carnival, amusement park, theme park, I've even read multiple YA books or tried them. The most recent one was Hide by Kristen someone. I didn't care too much for that one, but I've at least tried them all. Um, but if you want to bring, I've, I've read the family, the Pilo family circus, Geek Love, all the big ones, uh, Water for Elephants, which I absolutely adored. Um, so it was. I'm kind of biased here because it has my favorite location setting, but also the family drama and the family saga of it too. I really, really loved. Um, it's not. It's not so far toward John Irving, um, but it it does have that down to earth. Uh, the writing and beautiful uh, asides that. I just, I just absolutely fell in love with it. The next one is a book that I point to anyone who has depression, anxiety, uh, PTSD, even postpartum depression, any of those things. If you want a striking visual representation of depression and not really postpartum, but maybe uh, I, I will give you a trigger warning if you're someone who's lost a child and that is triggering for you, that topic is, then definitely stay away from this one. But it's uh, Eleanor by Jason Gurley. Uh, it's very much in the tone and framing of like a Neil Gaiman book. Uh, it's about a young girl looking for her sister in uh, th maybe the afterworld, maybe something different. Um, it's after a car crash, uh, and it's almost a trip through purgatory or limbo or however you will, but they come across... They, they come across some very unique landscapes. At one point in time, there's a world with dinosaurs and meteors falling down. There's a world that is solid pitch black. It's it's amazing, and if you read deeply and catch all of the not comparisons, but the uh, the allegory and the you know th those things, the metaphor, the simile uh, for depression and loss and grief, is absolutely fantastic book that I don't hear enough people talk about. Um, this one is one of those unique stories where the author published this as an independent book, uh, published it by himself, and then he got picked up by Crown Publishing, and the book was rewritten, re-edited, all that good stuff, um, and this is the finalized version of it. In fact, Jason Gurley, at one point in time, over on Instagram, if you sent him the book, he would draw 
pictures on the inside cover um, on the well the inside board and I thought that was really cool I don't know if he's still doing it but he, he did it quite a bit um, I don't even know if he's come out with anything since uh, but I would definitely read anything in fact once I get done with this video I'm gonna go check see if he's published anything else um, but yeah if you haven't read Eleanor by Jason Gurley fix that very quickly and finally, this is a book that has been up and down my top 20 list. Sometimes it's in the top 10, sometimes it's in the top 5, it's always in the top 20. There is, I've never read anything like this book, and that is The Gargoyle by Andrew Davidson. Um, the thing that sticks out the most for me is an idea or a theme of this thing called the Bitch Snake. Yes, you heard that right, Bitch Snake. And it's usually blocked out. In the text like there will be a black bar over it um, so only only says it once or twice but the story is about a man um, who is a very attractive individual and he ends up while he's drinking and driving he spills his whiskey all down the front of him this is the very opening of the book um, and he ends up burning himself all over his entire body but he loses his penis and testicles in the fire so he has no reproductive organs whatsoever and he ends up meeting a sculptor and they end up falling in love and the story is four different stories told by the sculptor to the man <clears throat> their love stories they got viking japanese lore all different kinds of wonderful wonderful sequences that kind of and then there's the framing mechanic of the main story but each one of the stories ties into the main story as well. It is beautiful. Every single bit of it is fascinating. And I really wish more people would have read it. Um, I know it is, it is either won awards or it was very popular at one point in time. It's had several printings. But I've never actually met anyone who's read it. So if you have read any of these books, I would love to talk to you more in depth, either down there in the comments or over on the Discord. Either way, um, I would especially love to talk to people about The Gargoyle and Eleanor because those two books really spoke to me. Um, and I don't get a chance to talk about those books with people. They are also books that stuck with me so much. I mean, it's been, it's been a decade. Since I read The Gargoyle, I believe. Let me let me check. Because I read it about the time it first came out. And it was published in... What a day. Where is the year that it was published? Huh. Oh, 2008. So yes, it, it was around... Uh, let's see here. It was before, it was long, it was long after that, I would say. I probably read it around, uh, 2012, 2011, 2012, something like that. But anyways, if you have read any of these books, let me know down there in the comments. But until next time, all hail the chair.